This is The Locker Room on News 3. Well, it is the final Friday of October, and that means the playoffs are right around the corner. Thanks for making The Locker Room part of your Friday night plans here this evening. A couple of big matchups in the beach and city rivals meet on the peninsula. That's all coming your way in moments. But we start with our 757 showdown. Oscar Smith has owned the Southeastern District for the better part of two decades, and that includes Western Branch. The Bruins have not topped the Tigers since 2003, but tonight looking to triumph over their crosstown rival and grab a share of that district title. The football program, candy bars. It's the hottest ticket in town. It's the game of the year, man. Fans flocking into Western Branch to see if their Bruins could pull off the upset of perennial power Oscar Smith. If it's up, if it's up, if it's up, if it's up. Senior night at the branch, honoring those who have given four strong years to the program. Plenty of emotion. Hold your head up, let's go to work. I love you. Plenty of energy. Plenty of noise. And a chance for the Bruins to snap a lengthy losing streak to their arch rivals. Tonight, this is what that true meaning of B1 Road is. This is that big team little me mindset. This is that all 11. Let's pick it up second quarter. Scoreless game. That's until Damon Etheridge leading the charge to swallow up Shamit Blizzard in the end zone. Tigers take a 2-0 lead. Defenses would dominate tonight. Western Branch taking the ball right back. Bruins force the fumble, come out of the pile with it, would be 2-0 at the half. Third quarter, Oscar Smith's turn. Blizzard looking for a big gain, but a nice job by Robert Jones to reach in and strip the ball. Tigers put an end to the drive with a turnover. To the fourth now, still 2-0. Visitors trying to ice it with another score here on fourth down, but the Bruins, a brick wall, and they'll get the ball back. Ensuing drive, an offensive spark. Taquan Trotman airs it out. Deep ball to Paul Billups down the sideline. Doesn't get much better than that. And the Bruins are at the 11-yard line. So now they'll try to kick the game-winning field goal with a minute to go, but the snap getting away. One team averaging 46 points per game, the other 42. But this one ends as a 2-0 final. The Tigers stay perfect. And they just played their tails off back to back there at the end, um, getting a stop with the field goal, uh, turnover after turnover. We couldn't push it in, but our guys did a great job of finishing. I'm, I'm super proud of them. We held it down, stayed focused, stayed locked in. You know, everybody messes up, but we know how to bounce back from that, and that's what kept us going. Oscar Smith wraps up the regular season next week at Phoebus. Western Branch done until the playoffs. Not what we thought we'd get out of that one, was it? Well, meanwhile, over on the beach, Cox and Kempsville, both win, just win, just one win loss campaign, both to green run. Tonight, a marquee matchup between the Falcons and Chiefs that should decide second place in the district, probably the region. This one at the Virginia Beach Sportsplex tonight, 10-7 game at the break. Falcons leading and trying to add to that in the third, but Gage Treffery, last second pass here, picked off by Jermaine Bland to halt the momentum. Chiefs immediately strike on the next play. Chris Spence going to take a chance, and it pays off. Riley McIntosh catching it off the bounce and runs it all the way to the 15-yard line, puts the home team in business. And a few plays later, they'd capitalize when Naquan Washington Pierce forcing his way past the goal line. That's all the Chiefs would need, holding off Cox for a thrilling 14-10 win. Back in Chesapeake, Deep Creek and Indian River clashing on the Braves' home field. Hornets take their opening third quarter drive into the Braves' 40-yard line. First and 10 here, the junior Hunter Barnes cutting back into the end zone, takes the 14-13 lead. 15 minutes left, though, a minute 15 left before the fourth quarter. Third and 15 at the 36, it's Davion Turns lining one over the middle to Amir Talley. Touchdown, Bravos! They would convert the two-pointer, make it a 21-14 lead. Indian River ends up winning a nail-biter at home over Deep Creek, 24-21 the final. Well, still to come, Maury looks to stay perfect against Virginia teams in 2022. Could Booker T. Washington hang with the Commodores? We're back after this. Thanks there, Bookers. Well, meanwhile, since a season opening loss to New Bern of North Carolina, Maury has been on a roll. The Commodores winners of five in a row, all by at least three touchdowns. Tonight, traveling across town to Booker T. Washington. First quarter 
was the Fred Johnson Show. Three minutes in, first and ten at the Booker's 43. Six foot three junior, mossing the defender here at the goal line, putting Maury on the board first. Seven nothing, and now they dance. With a minute left in the opening quarter, once again, Johnson's number is called through the air. Catch good on Sundays and maneuvers into open space for a 51 yard catch and run touchdown. 14 nothing after a quarter. Maury goes on to top Booker T tonight in this game, 35 to 12. Back to the beach, green run looking to stay perfect, hosting Tallwood. This one's all stallions tonight. Second quarter, up seven zip, handing it off to Damari Palmer. He'll do the rest, goes 55 yards, going back across the field, barely touched for the touchdown, and it's 14-0 home team. Green runs next drive, they'll do it again. This time a handoff to senior Zyron Baycoat. He gets behind a convoy of blockers and cruising his way in for six. The perfect season remains unblemished for Green Run, winning 63 to six. Battle of Suffolk, Kingsport hosting Nans uh, Lakeland rather. Bulldogs come out firing in this one. Kalitri Boyd continues to have a stellar season here. He gets to the outside, gets a big gain for a first down. A couple plays later, will finish off the drive, gets into the end zone, makes it an eight nothing Kingsport lead. Bulldogs continue to plow ahead. This time it's Corian Key, breaks out the fancy footwork here. Sweet juke move, he'll find Pater, make it 16 zip. Another convincing win for Kings Fork tonight, 58 to nothing. On the peninsula, Warwick and Menchville meeting in a Newport News showdown. Raiders quarterback Eduardo Rios starting this one out on a mission, keeping it himself, rumbles ahead for a nice 30 yard gain. Can't quite finish the drive though. Monarch's defense did not break, Amir Harrison We'll get the interception here right at the goal line, so this will stay a scoreless game. Warwick gets on the board in the second quarter. 39-yard field goal here, pretty good from Abdul Mokhtar to make it 3-0. Warwick goes on to win this one, 23-zip. Action in Hampton tonight as well as Kikitan and Hampton meet. We'll see which city rival getting the best of the other coming up right after this. City rivals colliding at Darling Stadium, Kikitan and Hampton. Warriors defense making a few plays in the third. Jamari Lumpkins going over the middle, but he's picked off by Tavon Jackson as the Warriors continue to lead big. Crabbers trying to find any momentum. They get off the sweet catch here from Zamarion Melvin. He'd set up a keeper and touchdown for the Lump uh, Lump makes it 35-14. That would be the way the rest of the way. Kikitan takes it by three scores. Grassfield heading to Suffolk, taking on Nansman River. Grizzlies down 24 zip to start the third. Needs some momentum. Max Albrecht getting them some of the sack there on defense. Warriors get their mojo right back. Big hit delivered, but Nasir Holland comes away with the catch. Big gain in first down for NR. Finish it off a couple plays later. Madison Jean goes right up the middle for a score. 31-0. Nansman River cruises. We're back after this.